Hello there, chat. Hello there, chat. Uh, we're, today we're doing uh, a little bit of something different, but you might have already been expecting this if you're, uh, if you're a regular on the channel. We're doing the, the yearly <laughs> Scream Fortress maps tier list. I'm looking forward to it because we have a couple of fun things to talk about. I got a little cheat sheet to go off as well, uh, just so I don't forget uh, what I'm supposed to be ranting about. And uh, well, yeah, let, let's get right into it, honestly, because it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a fun one. Uh, yeah, so so uh, I also I also went and made, had the liberty of uh, went through the efforts of, of redoing the last year's uh, thing, but we'll get into that um, once the thing is over. So first of all, uh, let me grab my cheat sheet real quick. All right, so first of all. We have a so we have all the maps here. I'm first. I'm gonna just put all of the zombie fortress maps in the zombie fortress tier because it's uh, it's kind of a different game. One, two, three, four. This one as well. I can't really recognize it by the image too well. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I'm just going off of the other images. Yeah. Okay. So we put all the all the maps there. All the five zombie fortress maps, and we'll go over that in a little bit. Right now, we're gonna focus on the main map. So first of all, we have Mansylvania, which is uh, this one, Mansylvania, I think belongs firmly in the A tier. Uh, it's a solid map. Um, the layout is very cool and unique uh, to the point where I tried to make a drawing of the layout to show someone because he didn't understand the layout. I made a little drawing of the layout and someone else completely unrelated, like he wasn't in the voice chat. He could guess it in two guesses because the layout is so unique looking. Uh, and I didn't even, I didn't even like, uh, I didn't even draw the layout well at all. So it's such a stand, like that's a really good thing in my opinion. It's a standout-ish layout. Uh, there's lots of outside areas that are connected, but not, you know, obviously so. Not in a way that, like, the sniper class is OP, but you can still jump around most of the map if you wanted to, which, I mean, it's kind of a big deal for me, obviously, nowadays that I play so much Trollger. Um, but, <clears throat> yeah, and, uh, in general gist of the map, it's a player destruction map. It has good visuals. It doesn't get too low on the FPS, barring the, the end turn, the, the end arena thing. Like, when the round ends, everyone gets spawned in this little mass grave area and that is gets a little framey but outside of that the map runs really well the hell zone is cool uh, you get two extra heads when you leave so you can have a total of 10 airstrike heads which i think are rockets which is really cool uh obviously not biased at all <laughs> uh, there's a custom announcer which is really cool because this is the first map that did uh, a, a custom announcer with a custom voice line for the um, for the for the gargoyle spawning now i've actually seen that Earlier today, they updated uh, Farmageddon to also have a uh, custom voice line for the gargoyle spawning. So that's really cool that other maps are not doing that as well, because I guess they had just forgotten to, to add those voice lines. But yeah, so so uh, Mansylvania is a, it's a pretty high quality map. The layout is solid, lots of packs everywhere, a general fun gameplay of, uh, you know, player destruction. So I think it deserves to be firmly in the A tier. It, it's solid. Yeah, I would, you know, check it out if you haven't yet. Then next up we have Perks, which I do believe to be this one, just by sheer um, process of elimination. This is I'm gonna put it in the B tier. I, it might actually be A tier because person I would put it in B tier because it's arena and it's a little bit slow for my liking. I like the the fast paced chaotic nature of the game, and in arena a lot of times you just kind of have to sit around a whole lot uh, because you're you know when you're dead. Um, but I'm putting it in A tier just because the, um, the map is so cool. Uh, the map has a lot going for it in the sense of like, it, it's yeah, it is arena, and yeah, there's a little bit of downtime between rounds and stuff. But this map actually makes manages to add more downtime, while also making me mind the downtime less, because we get to pick little perks at the start of each round. So if you don't know the map gimmick, uh, at the start of each round, you and your team get to decide on one of three, uh, just like there's a pool of perks that you can select and you're getting given three options and your, your team gets to basically select which one they want by just walking into the into the AOE, right? Uh, the AOE of like the perk itself. And it's really cool. There's some really cool perks in there, like extra healing, extra damage resistance, movement speed. Uh, if you kill someone, they like mark for death in the nearby target. Uh, if you die, your killer gets marked for death. All these different little perks. Uh, like that's just that's just the tip of the iceberg. Like there's there's way more. And so there's this whole aspect of synergy building and like this whole roguelike element of like, well, there you can get RNG perks basically because and then you know your team can get way better perks than the other team and crush them for the first two rounds. But then suddenly they have the better perks or they just have the better build. And they start to swing back and take the other, take the last three rounds, and then they actually win the the map. So it's really cool. It, there's a lot going on in the map, like in, in that sense, like the layout itself. Uh, I haven't really even, I've I've only not, I've not even talked about the layout itself. The layout itself is pretty solid. It's essentially like um like a three lane map, 
with on the the first line has the point and there's two other supporting lanes and the the big packs are sort of back or back closer to the spawn areas and the, the mid really only has like small packs small ammo and health packs uh, the point it's arena so the point obviously opens kind of late and, and one thing that i really like about perk which i'll give it credit for is the fact that they didn't go with the pumpkin bomb kill contract now, i don't think the map even has uh, pumpkin bombs to begin with but even if it did um let's say graveyard for an example which in my opinion is one of the worst contracts uh simply for the fact that i like to 100 percent my contracts and well you can't really do that on graveyard because getting pumpkin bomb kills is egregious it's really difficult the pumpkins are placed really badly most of them just splashback all the time and the ones that aren't placed badly will just get shot by the people who are playing the round because they're too afraid that they're going to die to it right and uh, it's also the another fun thing about pumpkins that I really like is pumpkin jumping, which you can do as any class. Uh, and you can't really do that on graveyard because it's way too risky. Uh, you don't want to risk that on a in a format where you only have one life. So the fact that there's a pumpkin bomb kill contract on graveyard makes it one of the worst contracts for completing it for 100%ing in my opinion. And it is one of the contracts that contributes to me not wanting to 100% uh, contracts anymore. And that is something that i've done last year i did it the year all the years before it i've just 100 percented it all the time because it was just a fun extra challenge i'll be playing the map anyway like i'll be playing the maps anyway with like friends and stuff so why not also go for the 100 percent? it's something that would essentially come naturally but graveyard and some of the other ones i'll, I'll touch on later as well uh, just have really bad missions or just unbalanced missions missions that clearly weren't tested or play tested by uh the people that you know pushed out the map uh which I criticize that very heavily, and you'll hear more about that in a second. Anyway, we're going to go on to the next map, um, which will be Spineyard. Uh, now, Spineyard, let me find it here. Um, hey, wait, did it, is it not in here? What the hell? Oh, did I forget to put Spineyard in here? Shit, I think I may have forgotten to put Spineyard in here. Wait, wait, cut, 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 cut. Okay, we're back. Uh, sorry for the jump cut there. I totally forgot to include Spineyard, which is, uh, I could have sworn I did it, but... I had to remake the I had to remake the terror list because apparently you need an account or something like that to even make it. So, uh, anyways, and I, I probably forgot to put it in the second time. Anyway, so Spineyard, it's a shame that I forgot this because I was immediately going to put this in S tier. Uh, the first time I played Spineyard, uh, the map still had a couple of issues, which I then left uh, I then left a, a troll esque uh, inflammatory comment about on the on the Mappers Workshop page, <laughs> and, uh, and then I talked to him about it a couple days later, and it turned out he was already aware of all these issues. Uh, they patch them out, or they fix them, or they tweak them, and I think honestly now it's one of the best Halloween maps of all time. Uh, it's it's just great. Like the layout is fantastic. There's loads of little flanks. There's loads of open areas. Uh, there's loads of packs. The it's a little bit light on pumpkins. Like I I think I could fit in a couple more pumpkin bombs here and there. That's probably my main uh, complaint. And outside of that, the map only has spells if you kill the mafia. Uh, which I think is really good. It means the map feels more on the vanilla side of things while still having the spells, while still having the ability to get a little bit crazy here and there. You know, you can still go for your weird, horse, like the weird vertical jump boost, cool, like axe fingers or frags, or you can still do like your your uh, pumpkin circle, uh, rocket jump, trolls or frag. Like you can all go for all sorts of crazy stuff with the spells still if you find them. You can still wipe the whole team with the meteor if you're good at the game, but or if you suck at the game. <laughs> uh, but uh you know so the, the spells still exist but they're they're less crazy it's not like those maps that have uh, like the witching hour and suddenly everybody has 30 spells and you know it's just super chaotic and unfun uh, so it's more on the vanilla side which i really really enjoy um and uh and obviously i could talk about the the skeletons for a second because i call them skeletons but they're really not skeletons they're custom v script entities uh they have custom animations they, you know they're, they're 60 fps for one uh, they have they they're firing like an SMG and stuff like they adjusted everything to make it feel good and the sound is no longer weird and they no longer laser you down at long ranges like the yeah, the only issue is that they're you know they are like they are essentially bots in the sense that they get stuck on terrain here and there you know they're not they're not perfect right that's the um, what is it called again like the you know they use like the the mapping the internal mapping grid or whatever that comes with the map and so you know their their movement isn't flawless but it's still it's still great like the, it's still a good feature and. Yeah, I know. Like, I really like the map. has a good has a good set of like points, and there's never really a point where you're like, oh, I'm forced to walk through this one choke. There's always flanks that you can take. There's always extra routes, yeah, and that's really good. That's really good for a payload map because a lot of the bad payload maps, in my opinion, like Gold Rush and Hoodoo, all struggle from the fact that there's like one main choke with the car, and there's like one side route or maybe two side routes. This this map, it might have two side routes, but there, it doesn't feel as choky and it doesn't feel as bad essentially, and so. 
yeah, this is this is an excellent map, and I really urge anyone who, ha if you haven't yet, to test it out. I mean, it's the first contract, so I doubt it anyone hasn't played it by now. If you're you know actually playing the event, but it's um it's a fun map. I really I I would recommend it to anyone. Okay, so now we're gonna it's getting a little bit lengthy here, so we're gonna go to the next one. Otherwise, we're gonna be here all day, which is corruption. Um, corruption, if you don't know, uh, is uh, eruption event. I'm gonna put it in S tier. I mean, you may as well start calling it the payload tier now. I definitely have a little bit of a bias, I guess. Uh, I really like Corruption, because Corruption, well, first of all, yeah, I'm calling it Eruption Event, because, well, I, I'm familiar with, uh, you know, the original map, Eruption. I think it was played in a Highlander Cup, but even before that, I, I was familiar with it on community maps. It's a great map. Uh, it's an excellent map, and the, the the layout is really solid. I especially like first, uh, because it's like, it's nice and open. I mean, the, the, the one problem is that first and the third, they get rolled kind of quickly, so... That, that's a little bit unfortunate, but they're, they're, you know, a good mix of open, but not too, like, oppressive for snipers. So the map is, uh, like, like sniper doesn't get too good, I mean. So the, the map is actually pretty well balanced in that sense. Uh, my one complaint is that, like, um, that they're, like, one or two versions back of Eruption, I think the geometry was a little bit more interesting on second. Uh, like, for spy parkour and stuff like that. Like, now it's a little bit dumbed down, which I think is unfortunate, because I think having depth for any class is important. And so they kind of took away the depth for spy, which... I thought it was a little sad, but I mean, the general layout of the map is real very, uh, still very solid. There's lots of flanks, lots of packs, like, there's no there's no one area that I'm like, oh, this is super annoying to get through. Maybe the second cap point is, a, it's like, you know, it, it basically, everyone gets filtered into the, where the point is, which is a bit on the extreme side, but uh, it's, I mean, it's really not that problematic. It's not that egregious, and the, the Hell Zone gimmick in this map is really cool because it's like a, it's like a fucking, what is it? It's like a, a loony, a loony bin. Um, what do they call it? An asylum. It's a, you have to go through the asylum and find your way through. And the really cool thing is that not only is it a melee only zone, uh, which prevents people like the revved up heavies from just sitting there in the portal area and just mowing you down as you come through, which is always like a big, uh, big bummer when when mappers don't really think about how people will abuse their maps. Um, it, so so for, for one, it, it prevents that. But for two, the whole of the asylum is procedurally generated every time it spawns. And so there's never, it's never the same route through the asylum, which is really cool. Like you actually have to find your way through and you get pushed, put into these little corners. Like in a lot of these hell zones, like even on Soul Mill, uh, if people aren't, you know, camping the portal very stupidly and making it unfun, uh, you, you won't really run into people because everyone is just holding W to get through the, to, through to the end. But on this map, like there are, you know, there are uh, procedurally generated dead ends, and there's obviously the procedurally generated goal path, which you're supposed to be looking for. So you can find accidentally one of these dead ends, and then get caught in it, and then suddenly need to melee fight your way out because there's two dudes that followed you in because they thought maybe you knew where to go. And if you, you know, and, and it's a decent strat as well, following people around because if if they do know where to go, then well, congratulations, you just made your way through the asylum in no time. And if they don't know where to go, then, well, you're meeting them in a dead end, and they're stuck in a corner, and you kind of have the advantage in a melee fight. Uh, which, I don't know, it's a cool gimmick. Like, the, I think the Asylum is actually really well thought out. I gotta give the mapper some mad props for that. So this map definitely deserves to be an S tier, in my opinion. It's great. Uh, it, like, yeah, I just wish the, I just wish Eruption itself had been added to the game in the Summer Update, but that's a different rant for a different time. We're not really gonna get into that. So, just need to make sure I have my, my cheat sheet here. Yeah, okay, so I have my cheat sheet. All right, so the next map will be Lava Pit. If I look looking at the cheat sheet, Lava Pit, I'm just gonna put in B tier. Uh, it would have been in C tier, uh, but if it was if it was just another Gravel Pit reskin, like if it was just like the Holiday reskin where they put a bunch of pumpkins down and they covered the area in ice, like I would have just put it in C tier and forgotten about it because it's would have been a very insignificant. It goes into B tier because they replace a lot of like the normal ground with pits, and I just think that's really funny. The hell zone itself is also good because it separates both the teams. You both have to push through a middle point, and so there's no camping of the portals or anything like that, which is really good. It just it seems it means that they actually thought about the issues that other hell zones have, and they decided to make a fix for it, which I think is really good. The hell zone itself isn't super interesting or anything, but it's the best place to get pumpkin bomb kills, which is nice if you're trying to go for the 100%. Which, as I said, I I have attempted. Like I I do try every every year to to go for it, and especially on the new maps, I think sort of like get a gauge for how you know how good it uh you know how good or how bad the contracts are so uh, i did I, and obviously on, on this map i got the pumpkin bomb kills fairly quickly not only because of the hell zone but also just because they're placed pretty well uh, but yeah generally i like this map the one issue that i have with this map and i was almost i almost forgot about this actually the one issue i have with this map is the fact that there is little to no ammo packs and this is a real issue like i don't know if they if they 
purposefully did this, if they purposefully did away with the ammo packs that already were sparse on that map, or scarce on that map, but they definitely, like, it definitely feels like there's way too few ammo packs on that map. Like, I run out of ammo all the time, and that's really weird as a, because I mainly play Trolger. If I play this map, I'm trying to, like, figure out new shovel setups, I'm trying to do new airstrike jumps, and I'm trying to do, like, cool stuff. So if, as a Trolger who's constantly going around the map, uh, and obviously the airstrike doesn't have the, the 60 rockets that the rocket jumper have, but still, uh, you're jumping all over the map. You should easily be able to get packs everywhere. And uh, the fact that I'm running out of ammo consistently, unless I'm sitting next to like a dispenser, it's kind of egregious. I'm not going to lie. So not only like uh, I, I'm, I'm really itching towards C tier with this one. I'll put it in B tier just because I do like the fact that they put pits. And like, I do think it's a good Halloweenification. Like I'm not a big fan of, of maps that are just straight up reskins of already existing maps because what's the point we like we're, we have this event for for new maps right so let's get stuff like spine yard and and uh, corruption in so that maybe we might get the normal version as well i mean the same could apply to cauldron the same could apply to pit of death like there's loads of halloween maps that are halloweenifications of, of already existing community maps that essentially would like it's like oh why isn't the normal version in the map right but but here it's like the normal version already exists so why would we get a halloweenification of it it just seems lazy like, I'm sure there, there's lots of talented mappers that made actually cool content, that made great new, unique maps with interesting new layouts. Why would we get a, a pure reskin? That's kind of why it's it's so low. I, I really don't like them anymore. And you'll see more of this in, when, when I just quickly glance over the, the redux of the 2022 tier list that I did last year. Uh, anyway, so now we're going to move on to Slime, which I will put... I mean, I, I'm going to say uh, putting it in C tier feels a bit unfair. Uh, so I guess I'll put it in bottom B tier because it is a decent map. But uh, well, so the reason I would put it in C tier it has to do again with the contracts for one, because the contract. The, the, so <clears throat> you have on this map, right? For one, you have skeleton reskins that are that are they're called Salman and they puke Jurati. And I personally don't think it's very interesting for one because they run around at 30 FPS and it just looks like shit. Even if they're reskinned, they're just a reskin. It's not very interesting. The, the map itself is a, um, it's like an improved version of a scrap map that was supposed to maybe go into what, what would be like the frontline update, like the war themed thing. And I played what it's supposed, I would, uh, I played what it's based off of. And what it's based off of had like this cool gimmick with like the mines and stuff. And the general layout was fine. It's, I feel like they tightened everything up a little bit and it makes the map feel a little bit small now. Um, just also just uh, I mean the the detailing on the map is really good I will say that like the map looks pretty good it's a little bit drab like you can see in the image here the color scheme is a bit on the drab side and like the <clears throat> how, do you, how do you say this probably like there's fog on the map and I'm not a big I'm not a big enjoyer of the fog uh, like I've heard people complain about it and say that it's like a little bit worse than it is but uh, I like it was it's not so bad on my config, but you can really see in this screenshot that it, it just kind of takes away from the aesthetics of the map. And it's also one of those maps that I wonder like why did you put uh, put spells on it? Like the purple and the green spells, we don't really need them on this map. It seems like a very vanilla map. There is no underworld, so then why put spells in? It seems a bit out of place in my opinion. Uh, and then and uh, I mean like the the map is funny. Like there's a lot of water. You can do pirate shark. The layout is all right. Uh, you know there's there's like a little bit of open, a little bit of close quarters areas. But at the same time, I think the what really holds it back, and which is why I was considering to put it in C tier, is the fact that there's a, so there's the Salmon Egg Sacks, right? Which are essentially pumpkin bomb reskins, but you cannot pumpkin jump off of them, which is, in my opinion, the a biggest sin against Halloween you could possibly commit, because the, the pumpkin bomb, bomb jumping is one of the funniest things about Halloween, because it's a vanilla gimmick that doesn't feel too over the top, and it's, it's cool. And the, the pumpkin bombs... The, the, another issue is that the pumpkin bombs can deal a max of 20 damage and they cover your enemies in Jurati. Now, this isn't too bad in and of itself, but the real problem is the fact that the contract still requires you to get kills with them while they can only do 20 to 30 damage max if they're standing on top of it. So the issue here becomes the fact that you need to get three frags with the pumpkin bombs and it's just not possible unless you just shovel a full HP soldier, he's 5 HP, and then you shoot the pumpkin, which, you know, that's... Or something similar, but that's a very specific situation, and it's just not fun at all to go for. So that, I mean, if that was adjusted, the map would immediately go from C to B tier, in my opinion, and then it would probably outrank. It would probably outrank Lava Pit as well, because Lava Pit is a reskin, and Slime is like actually somewhat fresh. 
Now, even though I've already obviously played the, the thing it was based off of, but it's still a fresh map. Like, it's still, you know, a map that hadn't existed in the matchmaking before. And so, I mean, you know, like, outside of that, I can't fault the map too much. And it, But it's a bit forgettable. That's my only thing. Like, there's no cool rollout to the mid either, which I think is a real shame. Like, if you're making a King of the Hill map, you, and, or like a player destruction map, you have to think about a rollout. If you if you make the rollout bad, then the map is just going to suffer for it, in my opinion. Anyway, so the last map is uh, the Groot Keeper Ads, uh, also known as Sandcastle. I know I just said a bunch of things about reskins being bad, and I do still stand by that, but this is a really well-executed reskin in the sense that the detailing is excellent. Uh, like, I actually really like the way this map looks. And it's not only just the fact that the map looks pretty, it's that it has this whole cool concept going on. So, uh, let, me, let me do a little bit of explaining here. So, in TF2, you have this thing known as the 3D Skybox, right? And if you somehow were to noclip to the 3D Skybox, then everybody else on the server would see these giants in, in, the, in the sky. Uh, that, that is uh, assuming that they're on 3D Skybox enabled, but let's just assume for this example that they are. So, this is something that looks really cool, and it has some like cool visual, striking visuals to it, right? But there's never been a map that actually utilizes this well, uh, or at all, actually. And this map actually, like, with the quote-unquote the lore of the map, it actually does make sense. Because there, it's a little sandcastle in someone's backyard, and you're just all play fighting in there. And then the match ends, and you take the telly, and you get teleported to the 3D skybox. And then, you know, they're in the backyard. And, and you can see here, like, in the back of the image, you see, like, a little little house. And you are in the backyard, and there's even, like, a little German easter egg. Just, I mean, the, the map is named the group keep underscore rats if you're looking for it in console, so... You know, the German reference is right there already, but there's, you know, there's a German reference on the map, which is really cool. And then obviously, I mean, it's the Groot Keep, it's a melee-only format. My one gripe with the map, and I guess maybe that's why I would put it in B tier, is the fact that, because um, the, the Hell Zone is really cool. Like, the Hell Zone is probably one of my favorite parts of the map, because it's just, you know, it's just this whole toy box aesthetic. And the map has loads of that. Like, there's a xylophone you can actually play, and, and like, all of these other little, like, there's a ball you can punch around, and it has physics. And, you know, like, the map has this whole toy box kind of aesthetic, right? And that's really cool. My one issue is that there's spells on the map, and and that's like I mean I'm all, I'm very I'm a person who is very critical of the fact that you can even use the huntsman and the healing arrows in in uh, in the medieval mode. Like I think it should just be a purist melee only format. But that's you know that's neither here nor there. But the fact that the spells are there, the the damage dealing spells at least I think is kind of on the cringe side of things, because you'll just be like having a melee fight and then someone decides to ch chuck a meteor and you're. I don't know, it's just really dumb, like, it just, it just feels unfair, like, if they updated this map to only have, like, the spells that aren't necessarily meant for dealing damage, so, like, the jumpy spell, the, the healing AoE spell, the teleport spell, the invis spell, you know, those spells that have sort of, like, utility effects, then I'd be all, all good with it, you know, like, it'd be a fine map, I'd love, I'd love to play it, but as it stands, like, the, the fact that there's just fireballs and meteors and, and shit being chucked around constantly, uh, it's not, not really my cup of tea, so it definitely drags the map down in my opinion. But outside of that, it's a fun map, uh, cool, cool like uh, cool aesthetics and stuff like that. So it's it's really cool. Uh, so now we're going to quickly go on to the zombie fortress map. So personally, I have to get this out of the raid right away. I do not like this format very much, um, mainly because um, how do I put this? It's not vanilla TF2. Like it's a mod and. You can tell by the player numbers already that the, the interest, like, the, the novelty has worn off and now people aren't playing it anymore. Like, if you were to go into queue, at least, I opened TF2 just now to get a couple of screenshots for this video, like, as, as guide. And, um, I noticed that all the new maps, they're, like, you know, fully in green in the matchmaker, which means that there's a lot of people queuing for them. But the zombie fortress maps are all in, like, the red-yellow because people aren't really playing them. So the interest has gone down and, you know, like, the, the format isn't, it, yeah, the novelty has worn off, essentially, right? And... That's kind of my main gripe, is that it's not been a little TF2, and so uh, it's a little bit harsh. I have to be very critical of it, you know, because, uh, yeah, it's Vscript, and it's cool what people are making with Vscript, but at the same time, I mean, you know, it's uh, it's not been a little TF2, so I can't really enjoy it that much. Um, that said, I do think this is my general order of the maps. I think Atoll and Devastation are at the bottom two, because they're just not they didn't feel very well made for the map i put woods in the middle because it is an okay map it's not great because there's some definite flaws that people abuse every single time you play that map but i like that it has water and so I, I i figured out some setups like you can go rocket jumper trolger and you can do some you can do some infinite setups where you slide over the water you do like a water jump then you do a sink and then you can just be keep sinking forever off of the water because you can reload two uh, because you go so high and then you can essentially water sink forever and it's really funny like if like in theory i speculated this i haven't actually gone for it yet but i think you can actually just keep doing that forever and it would be really hard for the 
for the zombies to kill you. Like, the zombies would have to figure out where you're trying to sink, then camp that so you can't get the jump off, and then then do something with that. Like, it just seems really funny, in my opinion, the fact that you can do that. So, Because uh, it's a really high skill way of playing that as well. Like, it's that is not easy at all. Like, most of these maps are bad because you can just ch uh, chuck a sentry down, uh, put a heavy demo and a medic next to it, and it's essentially an unbreakable hold for the zombies, unless they... Yeah, all, like all group up and they sent like three heavies with the uber medic push like uh to one shot the the sentries and kill everyone but outside of that most of these maps are very exploitable you know rooftops and, and corners and choky areas uh, the one thing i will say is that sanitarium is kind of like a gem in my opinion because it's very like it's a very uh, rough map like it seems very unpolished for normal tf2 standards but it's fine in this game mode because it doesn't really matter too much and, and uh, the one thing I will say also is that this map was fun before they fixed the game mode. Like, the, the game mode was really bad when it first launched. Like, the sentries were way too oppressive. It was essentially impossible to win for blue unless you got lucky or people started giving up and just started giving you frags for free. It was impossible to get over that threshold where the, the blue team could start getting that snowball because they have so many players. Uh, and Sanitarium was one of the only maps where you could actually consistently win as blue if you just kind of, like, used your brain. Uh, which is really nice, and this is one of the, the, this is still the reason why I put it at the top. It also has the best aesthetics IMO, like the, the coolest, most unique aesthetic. So that is the Zombie Fortress tier list. Um, like I said, I mean, it's a fun game mode. It's a, it has a novelty to it, especially after they did the changes to it, like the balance changes and stuff. Uh, red is no longer super oppressive, but a lot of these maps are still very exploitable for the red side, and so it can be very frustrating to play as blue. And I think generally a, a game mode like this is best balanced if it's possible for red to win, but hard, because then it becomes really satisfying to win for red. And that's kind of what you want. Like you want them, the team that isn't infected yet to feel like they can overcome the struggle, like they can last the whole time if they if they really tried and then like, you know, work together and played well. Uh, like if you if you make it too easy for the blue side to win, it, the whole, the quality of the format just goes down. Like the enjoyment of the format goes down drastically in my opinion. All right, so that set, that is all of the new maps. So now I'm going to quickly glance over, and this is probably going to be a, a super long rant um, about like how the... Okay, so so there's a bunch of changes from last year. Uh, funnily enough, Los Muertos and Bonesaw are still in S tier. Gravestone, actually, I'm probably going to put this to A tier because it's, I feel it's a bit unfair um, because it, it is kind of a, a meme map. I, I like it because it has the bumper car race at the end, and I, I don't know, I'm just cracked at that, so bias, you know? Uh, anyway, so the, the rest, like... There's a, a couple of changes here. Like, I really don't like Erebus anymore. It's essentially a, a dust bowl. Also, like, Hell Train fell off hard. Uh, Ghoul Pit actually went up. Like, I started appreciating Ghoul Pit a lot. Um, there's a lot of the re... The, also, like, uh, the, yeah, there are a lot of the reskin maps, like Bloodwater and Hassle Castle, Gorge Event, Harvest Event. They all went to B tier because I just don't think they're that special anymore. Uh, I'd much rather have stuff like Laughter, Maple Ridge Event, even Cauldron. Maps that are, you know, reskins, but we don't have the original Mulder Grove as well. Uh, you know, they're unique maps. They're cool maps. <clears throat> uh, like, uh, the, the general order of this, you shouldn't really look at too much. You should just take the, the general tiers, because otherwise I would be here all day trying to, like, order this, and then based on different categories, I would keep finding different ways to interpret my, my tiering and stuff like that. But generally, I think these four maps are, are the GOAT. I think uh, if you want to make a good map, you want to look at Los Muertos, you want to look at Bonesaw, um, my, my, obviously, I have a critique of Bonesaw, which is the fact that the death run thing is very one-sided and, and, and boring in the sense that it's, well, there's only the one type of trap, uh, there's teammate collision, This like, all the classes still have different move speeds, so it's literally meta to just go scout and, and sprint to the, to the front. Um, you can body block enemies into saw blades, which is kind of cringe. The layout is just one-sided, one-dimensional, and kind of boring uh, if you've done it two or three times. I think Los Muertos is really good. I just, uh, like, the, my one critique is that, you know, Witching Hour spells are a little bit too common, but the layout is solid. Like, uh, both of these maps have a really high skybox, which I think you need on a Halloween map. One of my reasons that Soul Mail is nowadays so low, outside of the fact that the mapper recently updated it and made it significantly worse for, you know, Pumpkin Frags, and I guess it should be in this tier, together with, like, just other maps that aren't fun to get 100% on for for uh for contract let me see i have another one so like graveyard i guess we could put here because it's just simply unfun and i guess we could put hell train here as well because the pumpkins on hell train are just placed terribly i, I generally like the layout of the map but it basically could be an after by now for me because the the pumpkin placements are so ass like if if you're going to use like if, if you're a, like a mapper like and you make a map like soul mail or hell train or graveyard even and you put so few pumpkins in the map and you put them in such bad places, then please do not add a pumpkin frag uh, 
contract thing because it makes no sense. You're just making people like me. You're making my life miserable. Like I'm, I'm essentially forced to ask, like, to, to play pubs with friends until they get out of balance, and then beg them if they want to stand on top of a pumpkin and I can shoot it so that they die. Otherwise, it's just impossible to get this contract 100%. And it's the reason, like, the, these maps are the reason why I don't bother going for 100% anymore. It just seems like it's just not fun to go for. Even if you're constantly in a six stack, it's, it's not worth going for. It's not fun going for. There is no reward for it anyway. It should, be, should just be this, like, bonus thing that sort of happens naturally. And it just doesn't on these maps. You have to force it so hard and it just makes it miserable. Like, the fact that I'm putting these maps below something like Terror and Megalo, that should... That should say a lot um, if you've ever played casual. People do not enjoy these maps. Um, and, and also, additionally, I will mention the fact that Precipice actually has gained some points with me because I found some really stupid setups for Market Gardeners. And I will hopefully show this off soon enough if I manage to land them before the event starts. I have like one or two clips of me going for them and getting like a hit marker and it makes me want to die. But uh, anyway, outside of that, I mean, there are some, you know, there's a lot of solid maps here. Um... Yeah, like, generally speaking, the, the layout, like, the, the general gist of it didn't change that much. It's just that, like, I guess maybe my trolls are biased is showing a little bit more. and at this, But at the same time, it's also, like, a little bit more refined way. So you can pause it here and look at it a little bit. I'm pretty sure you can see all of them. My webcam isn't blocking it. So anyway, uh, if that was going to be it, I don't want this to last too long. And it's already been 30 minutes, Jesus Christ. Uh, so that's going to be the video. Thank you for watching so much. And uh, hope you enjoyed it. And I hope to see you next year when we're inevitably going to do another one. Uh, but, uh, you know, assuming the channel is still live by then. So, <laughs> see you later.